Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Kill Protocol. We're updating this video in line with Games Workshop's request, and we're going to bring you some beautiful, clean, well-articulated lore to go along with your dirty, disgusting, bloody science fiction violence. In today's breakdown, we have the cold calculations of the Mechanicus going up against the frenetic fury of the orcs. But before we do that, let me break down something else for you. Today, I'm ecstatic to be breaking down the FlexiSpot standing electric desk. The heartbeat of many professionals and creators is their office, and the heartbeat of that office is their desk. Many people suffer with kitchen tables, hand-me-downs, and cheap, wobbly discount furniture, but they shouldn't. You should take care of yourself, and there's no better way to do that than with the FlexiSpot standing electric desk. I've been using it for a bit now, and it will dutifully serve all your needs and has the strength and features to do all you ask of it. If you need to get the blood flowing and deliver a serious speech, there's a setting for that. If you need to buckle down and knock out some work, there's a setting for for that. If you need to chill and play some video games or watch your favorite show, there's a setting for that. And if you need to solder, sand, assemble, or paint your crafting project, buy a good crafting mat, throw it on top, and this desk can take a beating and not flinch an inch. Invest in your health, invest in your posture, invest in your office, and invest in yourself. Check out the links in the description to take advantage of Sears discounts. You deserve it. Yes, orcs, large numbers, distance, 1,640 to 2,760 feet. Estimated probability of evading threat, 15.26%. Spirit of this machine, accept my will. The Archaea tech we seek is lost knowledge. To reclaim such knowledge is revelation. Revelation is worth any expenditure of energy, material, or life. Therefore, we must proceed, no matter the risk. You understand this, I know. No blasphemy of intelligence touches you. You are a component of divinity. Therefore, in the spirit that moves in electro and gear, you understand. I give unto thy mechanisms the command to protect. Spirit of this machine, heed my will. Aegis Protocol!
humanity thrived and spread to the stars during an era known as the Dark Age of Technology. The species flourished with life extension technologies, terraforming, and robotic servants. A war with sentient machines destroyed this progress, and the Age of Strife, a millennia's long warp storm, annihilated interstellar connections and shared history. Since humanity was nearly destroyed by its own technologies on multiple occasions, techno cults rose up, some seeking to surpass their humanity and others to restrain it. The Mechanicus of Mars wants both. On Mars, the Mechanicum, as it was known at the time, worshipped sacred knowledge. They believed that technology was divine revelation from the creator god of the universe, and that one day he would manifest in physical form to guide humanity into the future. They pushed the limits of their mortal vessels, endeavoring for immortality, so that they could discover hidden wisdom for as long as possible. To achieve this, they had no qualms about cutting off their weak flesh and replacing it with the sureness of iron. Our protagonist is a cybernetic data smith, a high-ranking tech priest charged with shepherding Castellan robots, severely limited abominable intelligence constructs. They are attempting to recover Archaeotech, ancient and hidden technology abandoned on the planet. The use of the data wafers to command the robot is an intentional choice to limit the power any one person can wield and to prevent another machine rebellion. They are attacked by Bad Moon orcs, who on the scale of brutal and cunning, lean more on the cunning side. Bad Moon's teeth grow faster than any other clan, and since orc currency is teeth, this automatically makes them the richest. They use this fluke of nature to buy the best armor, the best weapons, and the best war machines. They act as merchant tradesmen between the clans, leading their own waz as needed, but always looking for an angle that benefits them in their trade. They are tough, but are considered greedy, gaudy, flashy, and ostentatious by other clans. They are likely scavenging this planet for new trinkets to trade, and thus become an impediment to the cybernetic data smith's mission. To remove this impediment, the Castellan robot uses his power fist, but also a phosphor blaster to slay dozens of orcs in moments. Phosphor blasters fire white hot rounds of steel and burning chemicals capable of searing through armor and flesh with shocking efficiency. The cybernetic data smith uses a gamma pistol, a holy weapon capable of firing a beam of radiation so intense it breaks down its target to the atomic level. Despite losing an arm to the gamma pistol and his legs to a phosphor round, an orc crawls on, showing the toughness of his species. The data smith ends him with a strike from her omniscience an axe. In the battle, the Castellan robot lost full use of its leg, an unacceptable reduction in efficiency the tech priest must fix to survive. It would be illogical to fire. I mean you no immediate harm. <sighs> Vigilance protocol. While the combustion of Prometheum provides heat and illumination, in current atmospheric conditions, its light will be perceivable up to a distance of approximately 3.13 miles. Additionally, your biological sight will be limited in acuity by its illumination. The fire is not advisable. You are... You were with the Mechanicus. Confirmed. I... I thought there were no other survivors. I haven't seen anyone else out here. The forces of the Imperium and the Adeptus Mechanicus destroyed sufficient numbers of the Orcs to render their invasion non-viable. The battle was a victory by the standard military criteria. We won. Confirmed. <laughs> then we are saved. We just need to reach the rest of the Imperial forces. The majority of the forces opposing the Orc invasion have been withdrawn. But, but the Orcs are still here. I've seen them. Hundreds of them. The numerical value of orcs on the surface has been deemed no longer a threat, and the forces of the Imperium are needed elsewhere. This world is ruined, its productivity degraded, 
Its value is lower than others that might still be protected. Therefore, this is victory. It is a simple calculation. <laughs> so, no one is coming. I am alone. Then, then what are you doing here? I have a function to fulfill. But you said that the Imperial forces are withdrawn. The machine is eternal, and so is its truth. No will of man can undo that axiom. I am a tooth of the turning cog of knowledge. Battles occur, flesh fails and rots. But the quest for knowledge remains. A quest? So, you are looking for something? I seek an Archaeotech device that has lain hidden on this world. Archaeotech? <sighs> Is it valuable? The data indicates that the Archaeotech I seek is a form of electrophero infusion, both a power source and a means of metallic regeneration. If it is preserved and its secrets replicated, it will unlock the function of countless other machines. The use and implications of this technology are profound. Worlds can be rebuilt, legions made whole, wars won. The value of such a device cannot be quantified. I don't understand. Of course you do not. The existence of this Archaeotech is a secret. No others from my order know of its location. That is why I alone remain to find it. Some things are too valuable to trust to others. But you're telling me... The knowledge I transmit to you is payment for the aid I require from you. But... You are going to take me with you, aren't you? Negative. Now, you would think that Imperial factions would want to work together, but the truth is the Mechanicus is an empire within an empire. The Emperor of Mankind went to Olympus Mons and brokered a treaty with the Martians. Despite his prohibitions on religion, he would allow the Mechanicum to keep theirs. Despite the Emperor's belief in human reason and enlightenment, he gave first rights and authority over technology to Mars. Despite the Emperor needing to command all of humanity to his will, the Mechanicum was allowed to pursue its own goals both within and without his domain. This hunger for knowledge was a huge part of the Horus heresy. The Emperor's limitations against abominable intelligence, xenotech, and warp-based research were viewed as heresy against the Mechanicum's religion and contradicted his role as the Omnissiah. What god of knowledge would prohibit his most faithful servants from pursuing sacred wisdom? Warmaster Horus, on the other hand, promised the Mechanicum to research anything to their heart's desire and to create whatever abominable machines they wanted. Horus destroyed an advanced civilization known as the Orishan Technocracy and handed over their standard template construct machine to his allies in the Mechanicum, earning a healthy chunk of their forces. Those Mechanicum forces who declared for Horus became the Dark Mechanicum and continued their blasphemous work into the 40th millennium. They manned unholy forges to make weapons and demon engines for the forces of chaos, while burrowing into every technological secret they can find. Those that stayed loyal to the Emperor were subsumed into the Adeptus Mechanicus, a more closely watched, if still wildly powerful, faction of the Imperium. The Mechanicus, as it's known now, bristles under the yoke of the Imperium, but they know that with its host of Skatari warriors, knights, titans, and near limitless knowledge, they are the heartbeat of the Empire. Everything and everyone else is secondary to their pursuit of sacred knowledge, which is why it's so easy to dispose of this one lone guardsman. Guardsman's need for warmth and light will attract the orcs. His need for food, water, and rest will slow down their journey. The only thing of worth on his person is his prosthetic arm, and so with a gift of sacred knowledge, the cybernetic datasmith kills him and procures the arm to continue their sacred mission.
of this machine, heed my will. Aegis Protocol! Governor of the turning of cog and the transmission of charge, your servant supplicates itself before this manifestation of your divinity. Forgive thy servant for my haste!
The flesh is weak, but the machine is eternal. If I had not used the device, then you would no longer function. The existence of further Archeotech on this planet is possible. The loss of the device was a certainty if I had not used it to restore your function. Therefore, the use and exhaustion of the device allowed the quest for knowledge to continue. This chain of logic is correct, and what is correct is sacred. I cannot continue alone. Spirit of this machine, heed my will. Follow. The cybernetic datasmith and Castellan robot make it to the Archaeotech and phenomenal violence ensues. In that violence, however, the Castellan is destroyed, leaving the cybernetic datasmith with a choice. She can use the electro ferro regeneration technology to absorb the energy in their surroundings and then through an unknown process, convert that into new metal for her machine companion, or she can try to preserve the technology and make it off world by herself. Many have pointed out that it is her human hand, representative of what is left of her empathy, her emotions, and her sentimentality, that reaches out to restore the machine. While she tries to justify her actions with cold mechanical logic, which seems like a coping technique rather than actual logic. The ability to convert surrounding energy into a specific form of matter is a wildly powerful technology, a kind of techno-alchemy that could change the face of war. The truth is that the Mechanicus, in its jealousy, selfishness, and secretive nature, likely has hundreds or thousands of such secrets stored in its vaults, always to be studied but never to be implemented, lest it be corrupted by the world outside. Which brings us to the end for now. We did just get a bunch of old videos taken down at Games Workshop's request. We are going to continue our breakdown formula in order to shore up those gaps and do breakdowns on whatever else comes out 40k animation wise. Also check out my science fiction unified timeline video. It takes a dozen science fiction properties and makes them all Warhammer prehistory. We'll probably start doing content on those properties while we're waiting for more 40k content. I will also have a bolter video. There's a bolter back here. I plan on recording at the end of the month, so brace for impact. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know whenever fresh content drops. Join the Discord if you want to hang out with fellow nerds, and check out the politics channels in the description if you're into debates or essays. Get your breakfast from Magic Spoon, your skincare from Geology, get your wallet from Hawkins & Company, get your chair from Ewan Racing, get your desk from FlexiSpot, get your third-party bits from Libra Demonica, and get your minis painted by Mastermind Models and Miniatures. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.